The spooky season is upon us in Pokemon Go, bringing new raids, spotlight hours and events. And in this video, I will be going through all of the details and tips to help you make the most of it. Starting with the events for the month, firstly we have the Galarian Expedition event, which will take place from the 4th to the 11th. And this event will feature some great shiny debuts. Shiny Zamazenta and the shiny Galarian birds will be available for the first time in Pokemon Go. The wild encounters for this event will be both Nidoran, Abra, Magnemite, Whelmer, Sfeel, Aron, Beldum, Shinx, Fungus, Dedene, Wooloo, and rarely Chansey, Absol, and Emolga. Zamazenta will be available in 5 star raids with a shiny rate of 1 in 20. Daily Incense will also be receiving an update for this event and it will include the release of the shiny variants of the Galarian Birds. And for $8 you will be able to purchase a Masterwork Research which will reward 18,000 XP, 10,000 Stardust, encounters with Galarian Farfetch'd and Galarian Mr. Mime, and most importantly you will get a Master but is it actually worth purchasing? So the only point really of buying this research is for the Master Ball and $8 for the Master Ball is pretty steep. It can however catch any Pokemon without fail but what are the options that make most sense for its use? So previous to this event the Galarian Birds from Daily Incense which have a 0.3% base catch rate and a 90% flea rate have been the target for many trainers but it could actually be a mistake to use the Master Ball on these Pokemon from the start of this event. If the Galarian Birds are like any other wild legendary Pokemon we've encountered in the past, the shiny variants won't be able to flee. This means you will be able to use any number of Ultra Balls to catch them instead of using a Master Ball. But if you want the non-shiny variants, a Master Ball will still be the way to go, and it also hasn't been confirmed by Niantic yet whether or not the shiny Galarian birds will be able to flee. So if they do happen to be different and they are able to flee, then the Master Ball will be well worth getting and using on the shiny variants if you want them. Outside of the Galarian birds, the other main use of a Master Ball is on 100% IV Legendary from a raid if you're down to your last Premier Ball. So really it's probably worth waiting until the event starts to see confirmation of whether or not the shiny Galarian birds can flee and make your decision on the purchase based on that. Also during the Galarian Expedition event there will also be a Team Go Rocket takeover running from the 8th until the 11th and this will feature new Shadow Pokemon, new Shadow Raids and you will be able to get Shadow Heatran from beating Giovanni. And also during the Galarian Expedition event we do also have a community day which is on October 5th from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. and it will feature Sea Waddle. There will be an array of bonuses for this event and a boosted shiny rate for Sea Waddle which will be appearing much more frequently in the wild. On the 12th of October will be a mega raid day between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. which will likely feature one of these unreleased mega Pokemon. Next up will be the Magnetic Study event running from October 15th to the 17th. There will then be a research day on the 19th. Halloween 2024 part 1 will run from October 22nd until the 28th and there is an unannounced event taking place during this event from the 26th to the 27th which is a weekend so it might be a raid weekend. Following these events will be the Halloween 2024 part 2 event running from the 28th until the 3rd of November and there is also an unannounced event running parallel to the Halloween part 2 event from October 31st until the 3rd of November. And what about the spotlight hours for this month? First up on the 1st of October will be Pidov with 2 times transfer candy. On the 8th will be Galarian Slowpoke with 2 times evolution XP. On the 15th will be Shroomish with 2 times catch Stardust. This will be a particularly good one to do because Shroomish is a Stardust boosted Pokemon that gives 500 Stardust per catch and for this event it will be giving 1000 per catch or 1500 with a star piece active. Next on the 22nd will be Ghastly, Duskull and Litwick with 2 times catch XP which again will be a great one to do because Mega Gengar is the second best ghost type attacker and the best poison type attacker. Duskull is also worth going after if you play Ultra League because Duskull Noir is ranked 11 with 0 15 15 IVs. And Litwick's Evolution Chandelure is the 13th best Ghost type attacker and the 6th as a Shadow, and it's the 16th best Fire type attacker and the 4th best as a Shadow. So overall, a great spotlight hour to do. And lastly, for the spotlight hours for the month, on the 29th will be an unannounced Pokemon with 2 times Catch Candy. This is most likely a new Pokemon or a new costume variant of a Pokemon. But what about the raids and the max battles for the month? So for the 5 star raids for October, we have Zamazenta from October. 4th to the 14th with a raid hour on the 9th. Then Giratina in its origin form will take over until October 28th with a raid hour on the 16th and on the 
23rd. And last for the month will be Darkrai from October 28th until the 4th of November with a raid hour on the 30th. In Mega Raids will be Mega Blaziken from the 4th until the 14th, then Mega Sableye will take over from the 14th until the 28th, and last for the month will be Mega Bennett from the 28th up until the 4th of November. And in 5 star Shadow Raids will be Shadow Entei on Saturdays and Sundays only. For the Max Battles, in 1 star Max Battles will be the debut of Max Grookey, Score Bunny and Sobble, and in 3 star Max Battles will be the debut of Max Phalanx. There will also be a mystery Max Pokemon in Max Battles 2 at some point in the month, and this will probably be something like Max Ghastly for Halloween. But how good are these raid bosses and which ones are most worth your raid passes and max particles? So for the 5 star raids we do have Zamazenta returning and this one is worth going after, not only because it has its shiny release which is a really nice shiny, but also Zamazenta is the 7th best fighting type raid attacker and it is ranked 72 in the Master League so it could be an option there. Origin Giratina will also be available and it isn't available that often so worth raiding it because it is the 4th best ghost type attacker and it is ranked 24 in the Master League and ranked even higher in its altered form at rank 13. The altered form is also ranked 6 in the Ultra League, however it isn't available in its altered form in raids at the moment, but these Origin Giratina raids can get you candy to power up the altered form if you have it already. And lastly for the 5 star raids, Darkrai will be available and it is the 11th best Dark type attacker, so not a bad option, but if you have access to the more budget friendly Tyranitar and Hydreigon, this Pokemon is less of a priority to raid. So overall I would prioritise Origin Giratina and Zamazenta here. For the Mega raids we do have Mega Blaziken available and this one is well worth raiding if you haven't Mega evolved one before because it is the second best fire type raid attacker and it's the fifth best fighting type attacker. Mega Sableye isn't really worth raiding because it doesn't really have much meta relevance outside of the fact that Shadow Sableye is ranked 61 in the Great League so it's only really worth raiding the Mega if you need it for the Mega Pokedex or if you're shiny hunting it or if you don't have access to any ghost type Megas yet. But a better option for a ghost type Mega will be available after Mega Sableye this month which will be Mega Burnett. Mega Burnett is actually the third best ghost type raid attacker so worth picking up if you don't have access to Mega Gengar which is a better ghost type attacker but the poison jewel typing of Gengar gives it more weaknesses than Mega Burnett which is a pure ghost type so Mega Burnett will be better in some scenarios especially against psychic types. Shadow Entei will be worth raiding if you can because it is the seventh best fire type raid attacker and when it comes to the max battles with there being new max Pokemon being released it's worth picking up all of them if you can but some are generally going to be more useful than others. Score Bunny will be available and for Max Battles, Max Cinderace with Fire Spin and Flamethrower is very comparable to Max Charizard with Fire Spin and Blast Burn and better than Charizard if it only has Fire Spin and Overheat, so it's worth picking up Max Cinderace. However, unlike Max Cinderace, Max Charizard has access to Flying and Dragon type fast moves, so it can use Flying and Dragon type Max moves as well as Max Flare, and in particular the Flying type Max move will be helpful against Max Phalanx. Cinderace on the other hand only has access to fire and normal type fast attacks so only max strike and max flare are available for it. However outside of max battles Cinderace doesn't have much meta relevance as Charizard because Charizard does have access to two megas and the Y mega form is the third best fire type attacker in the game. Cinderace though in the future will get access to blast burn and possibly pyro ball and a shadow form which will improve its performance overall. When it comes to max Rillaboom it isn't as good as max Venusaur if you have legacy move frenzy plant on Venusaur but if you don't have Frenzy Plant because you don't want to spend an Elite Charge TM on it, then I would recommend Max Rillaboom with Razor Leaf and Grass Knot instead for Max Battles. Outside of Max Battles though, Rillaboom is the 23rd best Grass type attacker, but it will improve when it gets access to Frenzy Plant, Drum Beating and a Shadow Fall. For Sobble and Max Inteleon, I would actually recommend having and investing in Max Inteleon over Max Blastoise because it can do quite a bit more Water type damage. However, Max Blastoise does have access to Max Darkness as well as Max Geyser because it can can learn bite, whereas Inteleon only has access to normal and water type fast attacks for max strike and max geyser. Outside of max battles, Inteleon is the 24th best water type attacker, and this performance will improve when it gets access to Hydro Cannon, Snipe Shot, and a Shadow Form in the future. And Max Phalanx will be available, and generally it is worth going after at the moment for max battles because it will be the only max Pokemon outside of Double that can use max knuckle, and unlike Double, it will get stabbed because it's a fighting type, so it will be the best max knuckle user currently in the game. But outside of this niche in max battles, Phalanx doesn't have any meta relevance. And with that said, if you did enjoy this video, then I recommend checking out these videos on the screen now, and I'll catch you in the next one.